Hello and welcome to the 2019 FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships. It's the top 16 superstars, it is the Oceana region, and it is the Nations Cup that we are focusing on here today. It's going to be very, very exciting, this one. My name is Tom Brooks, alongside me, Jimmy Broadbent. We're here to guide you through the action here for what is set to be a very exciting race, as we said. So, Jimmy, the Oceana region, we know how close it has been, pretty much dominated, really, by two countries, but it is going to be fun to see who lines up where after round eight. That's right, those two countries, of course, being Australia and New Zealand. So a lot of rivalry between the two countries, which means for us some interesting and tense racing. Certainly does. Well, let's have a look at the point standings then going into this event. You can see Car Bass, or Car Base, however you prefer to pronounce it, is leading the way on 4,808 points. Not too far away there in second position is Adam2167, and around about 100 or so points there, and they're about separating uh, the third and fourth place drivers of Nick McCosey and TRL Hole inside the uh, top five there. You can see the Australians really dominating the top six positions in the point standings after seven rounds. Two New Zealand-based drivers, though, Sidorg there in seventh place and then Lionface inside the top eight. From ninth to 16th, the standings look a little bit like this. You can see Show Nick, uh, Nickerman there in ninth place and then the Conzio completing the top ten. Then the gaps get a little bit more pronounced as you look a little bit further down the order as you can see uh, the point standings. Be interesting to see whether these positions do top and tail and change after round eight. But let's have a look at the circuit these drivers are going to be competing on for the Nations Cup here today because it is going to be quite an exciting one, this one, and it is the fantastic track over in Japan, which is relatively new to GT Sport, the Autopolis International Racing Course. You can see there, 4.6 kilometres long, 18 corners in total, a circuit with some fast and flowing corners, those tight and twisty turns that are going to be crucial in these Group 2 cars that these drivers are going to be competing in, Jimmy. Yeah, that's right, of course, as we say, the Group 2 cars, a lot of downforce on those things. They're like fast, flowing corners, but this circuit has both that and some slow mechanical grip-based corners. So whilst the car will be lots of fun to drive through the fast stuff, maybe a bit trickier through the slow stuff. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how these drivers will fare then. You can see the penalty line there on your screen just out of turn 10. That's if any drivers are going to be given time penalties for one reason or another, excessive track limits, um, unfair contact with another driver, for example. That is where they will receive that time penalty and they could be set to lose not only a lot of time but also positions as well so we'll keep an eye on for that in race conditions but before the race we need to decide who is lining up where on the grid let's go over then shall we to qualifying and see how the drivers fare out onto the track now, the drivers starting and on their first flying laps. We're looking at Carbass here, who is the current leader in the top 16 superstars for the Oceana region in the Honda, Honda NSX. The NSX being very much the favoured car here, Jimmy, for these competitors. Yeah, we've seen the majority of people in these races pick the NSX. I think this is something about the NSX and this track combination that just works. Uh, maybe the car's better on tyre wear. Maybe just a little bit easier for the slow stuff, which would be tricky in these high downforce machines. Uh, but whatever the reason, we've seen the field absolutely packed with them. Of course, Carl Bass here uh, choosing to do the same. He sets his first lap time at 134.6, followed by Sidog there at 134.9. And Nick uh, Mazzoi goes a little bit quicker there at 134.3. So time's coming in thick and fast now. Yep, certainly are. Lots of time for these drivers to improve. The thing is, as well, if you have just joined us uh, for this and you haven't seen any other region's races so far, just bear in mind that all these drivers are starting with 100 litres of fuel at the beginning of qualifying. So they've got very, very heavy cars indeed. And what they're going to need to do, of course, is get that car as light as they possibly can towards the end of this qualifying test. So you probably see drivers setting those bank lap times in early just so they've got something in the bag. And then what they'll probably be doing is going around the track at a uh, slower speed to try and burn some fuel off, stick a new set of boots on the car, have fresh rubber, and then set one Banzai flying lap at the end of this session. Yeah, Mint GTR, your current provisional pulse, it's only 124.2. In terms of pole time, we kind of expect to see a low 33. If you're incredibly fast, you might just sneak into the 32s, but uh, 33 is, I think, where we're probably going to be seeing these guys end up. And I must say, Tommy, that looks like a very happy looking car in the front. It's got a big smile on its face. I think it enjoys being driven around. Yeah, it certainly does. It's a uh, it's, uh, fantastic car to see, and that is why it's uh, not necessarily why it's been so popular because of the happy expression on the front. <laughs> but you've seen happy expressions behind the crash helmets of the drivers as well because they've really enjoyed this car. The thing is, as well, is that obviously with all the drivers choosing similar sort of cars, what do we reckon that does to the, to the field? Do you think it makes it closer? Does it bring it further? I think so. It also gives your opponent a little bit of knowledge of you know, the car you're driving. You get an idea of what your car can do, so you assume that's what the, uh, the opponent's car can do as well. So it means that they are an equal machinery, of course. It means that the driver
environment is actually the one that makes a difference. And anything I think is a little bit more pure competition than we get in the real, the real world in terms of pure driving skill. Um, but of course, you know, that, 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 that's how these things work out online. It's more about the driver than it is about the uh, BOP and cars and whatnot. See there, Carl Bass, fastest uh, man in the overall season so far. Not the fastest man, though, in this session. He's currently in at seventh place behind the wheel of that very brightly orange livery Honda NSX. Just the one GTR inside the top 12. That's Monkey Matt NZ at the moment. Here we are looking at him with the uh, Logitech livery on screen at the moment. Very uh, distinctive, nice colour scheme. That's one of the things I love about GT Sport is that you do have the ability to customise your own livery. These absolute peaches of cars. Very talented guys out there. I'm not one of them. <laughs> I, can tell, I can tell you that right now. But they yeah, some great liveries. And you can uh, pretty much find uh, any livery you can think of, any uh, real life motorsport livery or maybe a custom livery you made yourself. Just go over and uh, use that awesome search engine they've got in GT Sport to go and find uh, your preferred livery. It's probably there. One of my favourites is this one, although it's actually a real life livery. It's the Raven livery that comes with this car. I've always enjoyed how that thing looks. It's a great mix of, uh, of colours there. Mint GTR currently uh, showing it off in great style by being our pole sentiment so we still have I think one flying up at least from everyone yet to really sort things out and see what people are going to end up for the race. Yep certainly so well let's keep an eye on the time see how the drivers are going to be doing no quick lap times coming in at the moment but still a few minutes left of this session drivers now are going to be coming in to put a new set of boots on their car getting the fuel down as we said as much as possible around 60 litres or so is generally what we've seen drivers in other regions be able to do terms of the uh, fuel that they've been able to keep on board their car and be able to get that down to, I should say. So it's a nice yellow flag, they're waving in the, in the final sector, the driver's now coming into the pit lane areas, big GTR, fastest man currently in this session, putting a new sort of soft rubber on his uh, car, of course, the drivers have the option to choose between soft and medium compounds on tyres, and generally we should be going with soft, medium up and down the field, pretty qualified for the faster compound tyre by around a second or so, so it is definitely the favourite tyre for these conditions. Yep, definitely. I mean, we do have the two compounds of tyre available. Uh, there is a medium tyre, as you can see in the top right-hand corner there, but qualifying, you'd be foolish to use it. It's about second and a bit slower than the soft tyre a lap, so you essentially set yourself a uh, un uh, unbeatable challenge to try and get a pole time for that medium tyre. So, given that how close it is uh, at the top of these standings, you know, when you can start getting to the top of these uh, eSport competitions, you start seeing all the, uh, the really quick drivers come together. You can see just how close it becomes. I mean, for example, our top seven drivers separated by less than four tenths of a second. This bit GTR, just doing a bit of rally crossing, going through the right-hander in the first sector. See as well the red dot next to A.E. Kanemos' name there. That indicates that he has been given a time penalty for one reason or another. So presumably he has been exceeding track limits or something along the lines of that. And the uh, steward has indicated that he should be penalised. And we'll see what that penalty zone is. You can see it's uh, just about to highlight in yellow coming through the turn 10 hairpin and onto the back straight. A very crucial part of that to be given that penalty, really. Not necessarily so much in qualifying trim, but under race conditions in particular. That's where we're going to see these drivers very quickly hit as they go through these yellow markers. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a... You see that as a bit of a, what's the word I'm looking for, it's, it's a consistent thing along other circuits, I'll think of the word later on, um, where they'll put the penalty zones in a heavy acceleration zone, so really punish the driver for the penalty. Uh, the idea, I think, is to deter people from doing silly things. Of course, sometimes you can't help a bit of contact, sometimes you can't help going wide and perhaps cutting the corner, but uh, it stops people doing it deliberately, which is really what it's there for. Yeah, certainly so. We can see here Nick McCosey, the Australian driver in second position, just over, or just under rather, I should say, a tenth of a second. Interestingly, second and third place, Nick McCosey and Tyrrell Hull, exactly the same lap time to a thousand of a second. I don't think you can get much closer than that. No, you can't. And Nick, of course, would actually uh, have, if, if the reason why Nick is second and not third is because he set the time first. So he's the one that gets to take the time, which is... Uh, been a rule in motorsport for a very long time. Doesn't really come into play very often, though, <laughs> thankfully. No, certainly not. I'll tell you what, the memories of that are 1997 European Grand Prix in Formula One, where you had three drivers qualifying on pole position. That was, I think, Heinz Harold Fredson. You had uh, Mick Hackenden. Mick Hackenden and also Michael Schumacher. Was it Hackenden, or, was it, it, I think or was it Jack Villeneuve? I think it was Schumacher. Ah, uh, it was Schumacher. Oh, anyway, it doesn't really it, make a lot of some difference. Some drivers did the thing. Exactly. <laughs> Three drivers setting exactly the same lap time is what we're trying to get at there. But I tell you what, it was very, very impressive that. 
and you can see two drivers that said exactly the same lap time. So uh, a little bit of uh, history repeating itself here at Autopolis. It's such as the nature of, uh, of competitive drivers. I remember an interview from that where they were asking, has anyone got the fourth digit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. Nick Mikosi, though, he's not matching TRL Hole anymore. He goes to the top of the timing sheets and starts his final flying lap. He gets over the line just before the countdown begins to run out. So he'll get one more bite at the cherry. What about Mint GTR, though, here? He is on his final flying lap. TRL Hole has taken the checkered flank. He will qualify no better than third position at the moment. Mint GTR, though, vying for pole position. He was personal best in that second sector of the lap. The third sector, though, is where it's going to be won or lost. It was a 45.3 third sector for Nick Mikosi. Can Mid GTR do anything to try and upset the apple cart here? On the last lap, over the line, he goes pole position, a 1 minute 33.033. He's at the top of the time sheets with the fastest overall third sector. A very impressive lap time. What about A.E. Canabos there? Fourth place for him currently. Can he improve? He can. Up to third place, head of the second row so far. I'm surprised that uh, Mid GTR actually took the uh, provisional pole there. It was a terrible last corner. It was all sorts of sideways trying to get the power down, so I guess the rest of his lap uh, made up for that. So here's Adam, uh, 2167. He's coming around the last corner now. He's on a decent ish lap. I'm not sure if it's going to improve or not, but here we go. Very shallow line into the last corner. Run to the start finish line. There it is. Does he improve? He does. He does improve. Wow. wow. Goes up to second position on 134 1. So only less than a tenth of the pulsator. Nick Mikosi, though, he's had an absolute shocker of a middle sector. He was three tenths of a second down of the fastest man of Mint GTR, unless he can have an absolute belter of a final corner. He's not going to be improving. Over the line he goes, and it's not an improvement at all. Tires have gone there. Yeah, absolutely. Third position. He only got, uh, he got the best out of his tyres in the lap beforehand. It is a second row start for the Australian driver, and you can see a number of uh, Australian drivers up and down the field. Australian drivers entirely inside the top five, then still the first driver from New Zealand there in sixth position, but very close in that qualifying session there, Jimmy. Let's have a look and see. You can see, look, four drivers separated by just over a tenth of a second. Yeah, incredibly close from second to third, that being just uh, five hundredths of a second. So, of course, these guys extremely talented. And again, it's the Aussies that dominate from first to fifth. Absolutely right. Let's have a look a little bit further down the order from ninth to 16th to see how the drivers will line up. And look, you have to go back to nearly ninth, or ninth position there, in fact, to see a driver that is separated by more than a second. That is very, very impressive. And less than two seconds separating all 16 drivers. This is going to be an absolute belter, isn't it? I think that's the closest one we've seen so far, actually. Um, usually a bit more discrepancy towards the back of the field. But yep, looking to be a fantastic race. So let's go through some of the race details, shall we? Now, you can see on the right-hand side the tyre specs we're going to be using, both racing meters medium and the soft compound attire that you don't have to change compound during this uh, we have an 11 lap race which is just over 50 kilometers uh, of racing for our drivers fuel consumption at times three meaning that fuel won't have to be added during this race but tire wear of nine times meaning that those tires can be very tricky very quickly if you're not careful yeah, absolutely. Let's have a look at the strategy going into this race then. Well, we know the racing soft tyre was favoured in qualifying. Will it be favoured under race conditions, though? You can see around about a maximum of six laps for the operating window. If you go over those six laps, well, you can still use them, but you're going to be fighting uh, that car all the way to the very end of the race. If you opt for the racing medium tyres, well, they're about 1.2 seconds a lap slower, but they have got a longer duration on them. So it's going to be interesting to see what tactics drivers will go for, whether they'll just do soft, soft, whether they'll go soft, medium, medium, soft, or whether they just won't stop at all over the course of this race. There's nothing, by the way, in the rule book that says that they have to use both compounds of tyres in this race. So let's keep an eye on things and see how the they will go. You can see 12 seconds for the pit stop, two seconds for the tyre change, so about a 14-second loss in total for a pit stop. Let's keep an eye out on it and see how it goes as we head over to the track and get ready to go racing for the Nations Cup for the Oceania region. Over to the grid then, and here is the drivers, and here are the drivers rather, going through the final corner. It's Mint GTR with that blinding pole lap. He leads the field over the timing line to start the race. Then the Nations Cup for the Oceania region is underway here at the Autopolis International Racing Course, down towards the first corner in Group 2 machinery for the first time of asking. Relatively static is what it's, we're expecting it to be, unless anybody thinks about a bit of a Banzai move down there, but it is still very early on in the race for now. The difficulty is, of course, Mint GTR leading the way, has to pick that braking zone and uh, not get swallowed up by the car behind, but also keep it relatively on the road in front as well. A decent start there from Adam behind. It's quite hard to get a jump on these rolling starts because the AI kind of controls you to a certain area. 
then you get control as the player. But Adams had a good start of it anyway, right onto the back of Mint DTR early on, showing his intention. Behind him, Nick, uh, there's uh, Makosi as well behind, very close. So second, uh, third and fourth now actually quite close on circuit as we come up now to the hairpin for the first time. Great place to overtake this. Take that, Makosi goes a little bit wide onto the grass. So that might allow fourth place a little bit closer. No, it isn't, but TLR hole right on the back of the fourth place driver of Kenemos there coming down the hill. Not quite close enough to overtake that. Yeah, he sets a bit of a train already beginning to form behind Kenemos there because he's dropped a little bit further back by a few tenths of a second. However, he does get a great exit coming out of turn 10 and pulls a couple of car lengths on TRL Hole there. So it's amazing how quickly it can change because a couple of corners ago it was TRL Hole who was all over the back of Kenemos and now Kenemos has got uh, Sid Dog right over the back of him. So very interesting to see how quickly it can all change and how close that midfield is in the opening lap. Yeah, but then of course we have uh, always had these battles developing the different field. We'll try and keep an eye on most of them as the race goes on. Coming around now the last corner to start the second lap of the race. To our hold you watching on your screen right now in the fifth position. The top three start to break away from the rest of the pack. Mid DTR, of course, leading that is about half a second between our top three drivers from each other. Come round T1 again, and uh, Makosi looking a little bit ragged. He said a couple of times already where he's gone to the grass. Maybe we'll just keep an eye on that, of course, because accelerating hard in a machine with over 500 brake horsepower on the grass doesn't tend to end very well. Nope, certainly doesn't. It is going to cause you to be uh, slipping and sliding all over the place. You can see Adam there in front with what looks to be some connection issues as he's just suffering a little bit of lag there. Nick Makosi perhaps just getting a little bit uh, confused by that, and that may be a factor into why he is uh, looking so ragged, but he is also pushing very, very hard in these opening stages. The problem is, is he does go off track once again. It's costing him time more than anything. It's not helping him close up onto the back of the driver. It's held, costing him time and also it's not doing him any favours with his tyre life either. And does that too often as well? He's at the risk of uh, getting himself a penalty, which will uh, definitely not help his, uh, his campaign for a victory here today. Coming down to the fast right, and then we start slowing down for that very tricky uh, last sector of the course. It seems that Mint GTR are starting to uh, eke out a little bit of a lead. Now one second to Adam, 2-1-7 behind. And Mikosi, though, still keeping the pressure hard on Adam. And for now, it does seem the top three have a little bit of breathing room for the rest of the pack. Yeah, we're looking at Mick Mikosi there in third position. Positions have changed a little bit further down the order. Carbass had a bit of a poor start. He's down there in eighth position as well. Kind of on his own, really, more than anything. as a bit of company from behind and in front but not too much in the way of it this is what we're used to seeing in these group two machines is the field begins to spread out and then as we come into the pit window in the latter stages of the race more than anything that is where it gets absolutely tantalizing because drivers on different strategies some opting to do a one stopper some opting to do a no stopper some going longer than others others trying to get the undercut around them as well it's going to be so exciting to see what different strategies these drivers decide to use you can see sit on there in the orange and white nsx just looking very close to the back of trl hole through the left hander he goes into this tricky right handed hairpin not an overtaking opportunity but if he can get a great run through this midfield section as the circuit begins to open up he could potentially think about something down in towards turn at number 10 but he's in that dirty air through this long never ending left hander as well which is going to be helping his tyre life or his charge on the back of the Australian yeah, side dog uh, the, uh, the, the top Kiwi at the moment so carrying country honours there in the velocity uh, Anna Sex coming down the hill once more. Always a bit of a rivalry between these two uh, countries. You should especially see it at, at events as well. And especially when I mistakenly said the flag's the wrong way around and I had a couple of people come talk to me after and say, Jimmy, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> No, absolutely not. We've uh, got to make sure to get those flags right. And I'll tell you what, with the small flags that we can see on the left-hand side of your screen, it does make it just that little bit more difficult Thank for you, us up here in the <laughs> yeah. uh, commentary position because it's uh, sometimes, when you're looking at it a little bit quickly, difficult to distinguish the different flags, given that they are quite similar in terms of their design. Through that never-ending right-hander, though, I tell you what, it does enough cause some wear on that front left-hand tyre. You're loading it for such a long time. No such dramas though for mid GTR. He's began to pull out a gap of 1.3 seconds to Adam 2167, who's just dropping back to Nick McCosey now. Nick McCosey again going a little bit wide at that first corner. Seems to be getting his act together though in the last couple of laps or so. And he's closing right up onto the back of his compatriot. It does seem that Nick has the pace at the moment over uh, Adam in front, so. I think it's just for a place to get by. But as you said, Tom, dirty air around here is uh, it's very tricky to get round, especially on this left-hander. The thing is, after this long left-hander comes 
Probably one of the best overtaking spots on the circuit, this, uh, this hairpin, where you can just chuck it out the inside and usually make it stick. How close is Nick? Nick again going onto the grass there. That seems to be his line, which uh, is running off the circuit on purpose to gain an advantage in my mind. So I'll be interested to see if the uh, penalty system catches up to that or not. For now, it doesn't. Nick Lowe in the draft of Adam going down the hill. But again, a couple of downfalls coming, uh, corners coming back up, so he'll be forced to back off a little bit. Yeah, he's very, very he's close, not. though, isn't he? He's going to try and find his way through up the inside to the oh, right-hander. Well, well. That was forceful and aggressive from Nick McCosey. I wonder what the stewards would be thinking about that. Well, going off the circuit to go faster and ramming your way past people it's not a way to make friends in GT Sport. However, the penalty system sees nothing wrong with that, so he stays up into second place. Adam moves down into third. That little um, run in between the two drivers has allowed Kenemos behind in fourth place to get onto the back of his back as well. So Adam now has to look both forward and back. So down the start finish straight we go to start the fifth lap out of 11 here at the Autopolis Circuit. Car Bass is the first driver to blink. He's into the pit lane for a set of soft tyres. So. What are the other drivers around him going to do? Of course, he's going to drop right towards the back of the field here is Carbass, and he'll come out, but he'll have fresher tyres and fresher rubber. Now, we've seen this pay dividends in other regions there, Jimmy, the fresher rubber. If you don't lose too much time and you pit early enough, it can prove to be quite beneficial. If you don't pit and you go past that pit window, it's pointless doing it. Yep, I mean, that's pretty much where we are right now, and it seems a lot of drivers have kind of learned um, from other races. Now, this is a very interesting thing that we have in GT Sport, is that, of course, uh, with us being a worldwide competition, a worldwide uh, eSports series, is that uh, some races happen after others because of time zones. So these guys have a bit of a luxury because they're right at the end of the spectrum, so they can see what everyone else has done so far, the Americans, they can see uh, what the, uh, the European guys have done as well, so they get an idea of what to do on tyres. So we've had one person come into the pits, as you said, Car Bass, who... Uh, was or was leading um, so he's coming for the one stop at least he'll be doing the one stop but uh, we have also seen people do the no stop uh, we'll see how it plays out it's hard, it's hard to say the thing is that the, the field is really close all up and down like, we're not separated by much at all if you look at your mini map there on the side the arrow at the end is Carl Bass who's made his pit stop whereas the rest of the field is separated by less than half a sector yeah absolutely right this is a good thing as well for Carl Bass is that he's going on his outlap now and he's got clear track in front of him he hasn't got any direct competition. Meanwhile, Adam comes into the pit lane, closely followed oh. by uh, Kanemos as well as Mikosi. He's also in the pit lane there from second position. So a lot of drivers blinking at the end of lap five at the start of lap six here. So this is going to be very interesting. The race leader, though, TRL Hole now, he does not pit. All the front runners coming into the pit lane, so they are not going to do a no-stopper, as we have seen in other regions. Other drivers, though, opting to pit, getting that fresher rubber on, so it does level that playing field out a little bit more. It does allow Carbass to get himself now back up into eighth position however if he was the only driver around him to do that sort of strategy it would have been very beneficial for him towards the end of the race if nobody else everybody else has done it it kind of negates that advantage yeah and unfortunately for uh, the car pass there uh, now in eighth position now so we've got it all to do on track we have a couple of guys who are yet to pit up in the top four in fact uh, three of our top four drivers have yet to pit and here's one of them trr hole who's now leading the field now uh, i think end of lap six is realistically the end of the pit window although the later you pit the worse it is for your race so at this point i think maybe these guys look to try and go to the end so let's have a look we have TR oh, 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 race he's, leader he's just we've seen that happen before tom he's put the wheel on the grass trying to use as much of the track as possible somehow gathers uh, gathers it all back up again but loses about two seconds to lion face and scrubs those tires and again you can see the tires nice and hot now and really hard for TR. TRL hold to put that power down I wouldn't be surprised if he thinks you know what I might try and pit now because he's really burnt up those tyres after that yeah Lion Face takes over the lead at the front of the race two mistakes from TRL hole and surely he's going to have to pit that is a disaster of an inlap though because he's going to lose a massive chunk of time there as well if he does come into the pit lane but he doesn't he opts to continue onwards so that's an interesting strategy call there for TRL hole and now he's at the point of no return there's no point of him pitting because he's going to lose way too much time of course he'll have fresher rubber at the end of the race that is the converse he will have a bit more pace towards the end of it but it's not really going to be a much of an advantage for him especially with that mistake and we just know how quickly one mistake can cause you positions in this race two mistakes in the space of a few corners can really put pay to your result at the chequered flag. Well, the secret to making the no-stop strategy work is by having a bigger gap as possible 
um, before everybody pits. And that gap was about 10 seconds before all the uh, the spinning and whatnot happened there for TRR Ho. And now the gap between himself and Mint GTR, the first of the people who have stopped, is now down to only six seconds. So I think it's only a matter of time, Tom. Looking at Mint GTR, your former race leader here then as well. Surely those top two are going to be pitting before long. If not, he's got a great pace advantage over the rest of the field. If you look at Lion Pace last time around, he was a 1 minute 37.471. Mint GTR, by comparison, a 1 minute 34.448. Just a casual few seconds quicker then. Yep, easy. <laughs> easy peasy. That's, that's, that's what new tyres does for you around here. Uh, this circuit really does rely on having a good set of tyres underneath you, especially with these fast corners, because if the tyres give up, the downforce can't work properly, you find yourself sliding, and it's just all compounds very quickly, as uh, Mr TRR Hole is showing us right now. That does not look very fun to drive at the moment. Yeah, it certainly doesn't, flying through that long, sweeping right-hander then, and surely he's going to continue on was all, does he? No, he does go into the pit oh, lane then, right at the last minute he blinks. Lion face, though, continues on, so the race leader does think he's got the pace to hold this until the end of the race. Three laps remaining now there, TRL Hole in the pit lane. He's going to lose a chunk of time as well here. Let's keep an eye and see him where he re-emerges. As I said, the advantage is that he will have fresher rubber at the end of this race, but he's going to emerge from this race, from that pit stop rather, into the race in eighth position. So he's got a lot of work to do. The good thing is, the advantage is that he's got a few cars in front of him that are all within a couple of seconds or so, so it's not too bad. I say that actually because he's actually emerged out now the timing's updated itself he's actually quite far behind uh, side <laughs> yeah, on there in seventh <laughs> position so I was completely wrong yeah. in my analysis there well, not, not the first time anyway <laughs> but, no, quite not the last certainly uh, uh, I was going to say that you have to think uh, for Lion Face if memory serves which it usually doesn't so Lion Face was around sixth or seventh place uh, before all this started all the pit stops happened so really he's looking for a kind of net gain on that I don't think he expects to win this race because you can see just how close uh, how quickly sorry GTR is closing on the line face in front there, and he's taking the cozy with him only a second and a half behind. So, uh, really, if line face can come away with this uh, from this race, I think higher than six or seven, that would have been a good strategy call for him. Yeah, absolutely. Now the question is, can Mint GTR catch Lion Face and can he pass him, crucially, before the end of this race? If you look at the lap times last time around, Lion Face a 138.072, Mint GTR a 134.365. He's definitely got the pace and he's got a bit of time on his side here as well. You can see just how much he's been able to reel him in. So surely it's only going to be a matter of time before he's right on his rear wing. Well, he's got some time. He also does have, as I said, Mr. Nick Picosi behind him, of course. If he takes too long trying to get by Lion Face, he's going have to do it uh, on this lap probably given how quickly he's gaining if he takes too long doing that then Mikosi behind him will go all right I'll have a go then and probably take the place off him again as Mikosi goes onto the grass and gets sideways I have no idea uh, I, I don't want to be the uh, the guy who supplies his rear tyres I'm sure he's going through him uh, very quickly indeed yeah maybe he's been doing a bit of uh, rallying in Australia to uh, get a bit of training in for this one if he has been doing that it's been serving him quite well so far <laughs> the amount of times he's had a few off track excursions Adam 2167 they're not too far behind he was in a podium position earlier on in this race let's not forget there as well at the moment he sits off of it now meanwhile the gap at the front there Jimmy it's down to four tenths of a second as you said it could be on this lap and surely he's going to be thinking about a move just look at how much more confidence how much more grip he's got under braking he's got the slipstream now and surely he's going to try and take that position away Iron Face there kind of went defensive at first here we go into the, uh, the right hand at Mint GTR thinking better of it but he does have the line now he backs out of it which means he's now going to have to wait behind the New Zealand driver all the way up the hill and that's why I said Tom now look at Mikosi in the background he's going to just uh, uh, draw right back up to the, this little pack here now it's three way uh, scrap for first position as we come round the long right hand or it's coming up right now I should say and I wouldn't be surprised if we see Mint DTR just driving around oh, the outside he makes the mistake there it is the mistake has been made it's been held up and now they're all right close together this could be anyone's game this certainly could be into the slipstream comes Nick McCosey but Mint GTR also in the slipstream of Lion Face side by side second and third place go down the start finish straight as Lion Face goes defensive he goes over to the normal racing line for the braking zone Mint GTR holds his track position he tries to take the lead away down to the first corner he runs side by side with the orange and white uh, Honda NSX out of turn one and here comes Nick McCosey as well nearly three drivers battling for the race lead 
mid GTR holds that position. Lionface goes down to third as Nick Mikosi slices his way through. And Mikosi is looking very aggressive indeed. And we know how aggressive he has been in this race as well. And surely it's only going to be a matter of time. And from a three way scrap, it's potentially becoming a five way scrap for position as Adam goes through as well as A.E. Kanemos finding track position. So Lionface going from the race lead to fifth position in less than half a lap. I think Lionface can do that. His tyres are absolutely shot at this point, so he's just trying to hang on for dear life and uh, looking rather scary out there. But of course, all that delay for Mint GTR and for Mikosi, as you said, it's allowed Adam and uh, Kenemos back into the fray as well. So we now have our top four drivers separated by about two seconds. So one mistake from either of them could see a drastic change in the stand I mean, GTR, luckily at the moment for him anyway, has the race lead. A little bit of breathing room now, up to about seven temps from Mikosi behind. I think on the circuit, um, they are, I think Min GTR's a little bit quicker just over a lap, but of course traffic comes into play. If anything, Mikosi now is struggling and being caught by the two cars behind. He's in that dirty air though, isn't he? That's the thing as well. That front is going to be washing wide at every single opportunity. It's going to be destroying his front tyres, and he's only got a lap or so to try and mount a charge on Min GTR. And if Min GTR's pace continues as it has done for the last couple of laps, there is absolutely no way that he will be challenged. But second position for Nick Mikosi could be under threat. Third position for Adam could be under threat here as Kanemos looks to the inside line at the first corner. He can't quite find a way through there, but he's signalling his intentions on the final lap here. Kanemos is actually the fastest of this group entirety so far so he's faster than the leader right now in the last lap but he's got, he's got to get past and we always say catching someone is one thing overtaking is quite another and uh, he's going to find his boys rapidly running out of opportunities to overtake we have this one down here he wasn't quite close enough he's now got to try and get as close Whoa. as possible through this long long left hander and again the dirty air comes into play up here coming round now how close can he get because this hairpin coming up next is a great overtaking opportunity only two attempts in it they run onto the grass he looks to the inside i'm not sure he's going to go for it no he doesn't tuck back in behind and no he kind of half partly makes a move tries to fake Adam out there but has to stay behind for another corner yeah down the straight they go he'll have the slip through advantage but I don't know if he's going to have enough time to be able to use it into the right hander and he certainly doesn't so unless Adam makes a mistake in this in the final sector that is going to be the last opportunity for Kanemos to try and find his way past but what an absolutely fantastic and tantalizing end to this race in the Nations Cup for the Oceania region through the right hander look at how much Kanemos is closing 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 but is he going to have the opportunity to get himself onto the podium as we come into the final two corners. Mint GTR has got this one in the bag. Kanemos is looking to the inside. He's looking every which way he can, but an opportunity is not presenting itself. No troubles, though, for the Australian of Mint GTR. He comes across the line to take victory in the Nations Cup. Nick Mikosi in second. Adam holds on to third position, and Kanemos finishing just off of the podium there in fourth place with an Australian top six being completed by Carbass as well. Looks like the strategy didn't quite work out for Lion Face there, back into seven where he was before all the pit stops, but a great showing from the Aussie drivers. We have, as you said, have to go down to seventh and eighth place before we find our first Kiwis. Just seems that Kanemos didn't quite have uh, enough time there to get the move done. The tyres, I think, all being a little bit uh, difficult at that point of the race and uh, to, yeah, coming into play as well. You can see the race results on your screen here now. So Min GTR, Nick Mikosi, Adam 2167, your podium finishes. You can see TRL Hole there, the fastest man in that race by quite a significant margin as well. It's got to be said, his fastest lap being a 1 minute 33.766. Just inside the top tier there, we see uh, A.E. Shinik Moman and then also Monkey Matt, as well as the other drivers a little bit further down the order. No other particular battles that uh, were worth mentioning just outside of those top 10 positions, but some good racing up and down the field. And as we mentioned in qualifying, so close it was as well. Well, what does that mean for the point standings then? You can see Mint GTR is leading the way, but that margin, Jimmy, very, very small now to Nick Mikosi. 5,085 points for Mint GTR, 5,016 for Nick Mikosi. Yeah, and you can see on the right-hand side of the screen under round eight, the numbers highlights in blue signifying that this is going to be a scoring round for these guys. I think it's the three best results when all uh, is said and done, but it's two for now as we're only on round eight. You can see as well, uh, Kenemos as well, down in fifth, having a great race as well, also moving up the table. Yeah, absolutely right there. You can see a few drivers with a few sort of blank bits, the asterisks or the uh, hyphens, I should say, 
in those particular rounds means that they have missed those uh, rounds of the championship. So all good, all things considered for them. A little bit further down the order, let's look for 9th to 16th then, shall we? See Shinico Man and the Conzio completing the top 10. Then as you get a bit further down the order, there's quite a nice little battle going on there between Ranger Roz and Brocky for 13th position, just 10 points separating those two drivers. And then the gap gets a little bit more pronounced as you go further down the order. Anyway, Top 16 Superstars next event takes place on the 25th of May. If it's anything like this one was, it is going to be an absolute belter. Don't miss it, whatever you do.